All right, so in battle number three, I'm playing High Elves, and I didn't know it at the time, but um, my friend Steve, who plays in the basement, he has now, uh, his actually first game, it was Ogres vs. Ogres, and he his game went so fast that he was actually able to play two complete games in the time it took Renato and I to play the first game. But anyways, so Dark Elf looks like this. Or, I'm sorry, it's a High Elf player, but we're using my Dark Elf. Huh? Yeah, they go there. That's where they're supposed to oh, be. All right, so he has a bolt thrower on the hill. This is represented as his uh, Frost Phoenix. These old Corsairs are representing his uh, Lion Warriors, whatever those are called, Great Weapon Lion Warriors. And he has his level 2 in, in the unit. I just put her off to the side. There's only 23 Spearmen there, but he has a unit of 30 Spearmen with his BSB in there. And he has a level 1 Mage with no naked. He has five archers, which I'm using for repeated crossbows, and he has five Valyrian Reavers and a bolt thrower on the hill. Facing off of this, against this, is my Halberdiers, my Captain, my Luminarch, which should be my Huracanum, my Dummies, and Hellblaster, there's the Huracanum, and the Knights, Stubborn Knights, and the Spearmen. So, he has a hills in his deployment zone, and I have a hill here. So, and of course, he vanguards and he gets to go first. So, I'll show you what that looks like. Yeah. So, roughly his turn one, and Renato goes oh, sneaks over because he's playing on the table next to me and says, Watch out for that Luminarch because it's brutal. I want to kill your Frost Phoenix. <laughs> so, anyways, he moves the Frost Phoenix up here, moves the Lion Warriors up here with the level four inside, and I find out that the Spearmen have plus one movement banner, so they actually chug up 12 inches to right about there. The fast calf come up here, and everything else just kind of stays where it's at. So that's his movement. In his magic phase, I managed to dispel everything. Uh, he gets nothing off. He's got a ring. He rolled like four for his magic phase, and uh, yeah, he got no work done at all. So that's the way it looks here, and I'll show you where I got cocky, because on my turn, I do take the Luminarch, and I target the Frost Phoenix, and I do get the spell through, and I do strength eight, so I need a two to wound, two up to wound, and I wound. He's got a five up uh, ward save. He doesn't make it, and I roll max wounds. I get three wounds on the Frosty on my first turn with just the Luminarch. So what do I do? I take my Fire Mage that's over here. Uh, no, I, no, I didn't didn't take the Fire Mage. Oh, actually, you know what? The Fire Mage was with the with the archers here like this. So I take the Fire Mage, and I run him up something like this, and I cast a Fireball, medium Fireball at it. I do no wounds to it whatsoever. Um, so in a regular shooting phase, I take, you'll never complete this, Hellblaster Volley Gun, doesn't miss fire. I rack off like 22 shots against the thing. I roll 10, 10, and a 2, 22 shots. I need fives to hit, I need fives to wound, because it's toughness six, and he's got a five up ward save. I do one wound, one wound to it. Could have took the Frosty down just like that. But as it is, the Frosty's sitting on one wound. Um, and I think he said it has five, so I did three plus f one more for this. I need one more wound oh. to kill the Frosty on my first turn. Five. But it didn't, so I'm thinking even if it crashes into something, I only need to get one wound on that thing, and it's dead. I don't know how many points it is, but it's, it was menacing me. So also over here on my turn, I charged the Halberdiers because I'm really cocky, thinking maybe he'd hold. Uh, as I have no fear of these spearmen, even though there's 30 of them with the BSB in there, I'm thinking my halberdiers just rocked out rat ogres and just obliterated them. So I'm thinking I'm way good. And that's when it dawned on me that after I charged here and he fled, can you take these guys? He fled like back to his bolt thrower. Okay. And um, then I think, however they fled, they were still close enough for my captain on Pegasus to charge them again, which made them flee again. And then they bounced. They were somehow they were close enough to be 20, a maximum charge range. And they just fled to the other side of the bolt thrower. Not on the, th yeah, that's clever. Just do that. Um, just fled to the other, and the bolt thrower passes its panic check. So yeah, they're kind of like that. Oh, here comes the furnace, perfect. Yeah. So I failed my charge here. And so I go up like four inches. So these guys come up like this. Something like that. Ultimately, this this guy ends up, you know, somewhere up here, out of line of sight of the spearman and stuff like that. So I'm thinking I'm in a good I'm in good shape here. If he charges me, I'm not afraid. I'm gonna wreck that unit of the spearman. Is what I'm thinking. So on his turn two, he takes the 
frosty and hides them behind the building. And these guys try to charge and they fail charge, but they go up like four inches or something. He was close. He, he maybe needed like a, he was like a 14, so on two to whatever it was. He, he tried to charge this unit three times in a row. It wasn't until his first turn he moved up, second turn he failed charge, he's charging the, the Hell Blaster. So second turn he failed charge, third turn he failed charge, fourth turn he failed charge, and finally on the fifth turn of the game, he finally makes it into the Hell Blaster. Did not shoot these guys apart? I was trying to shoot them with the Hell Blaster, um, but I just, I couldn't, I, I mean, he, the Hellblaster was just not working for me. I just couldn't, I just couldn't kill it. For four turns in a row? Yeah, I mean, I, I had no misfires. I had nothing, nothing on, and I just, I kept firing with it, and uh, I just, I couldn't get him. I would roll relatively high, and i go to wound, and he had, oh, you know what? He had, um, he's got Banner of the World Dragon in there, but I think he had some kind of a ward save, too. Um, with his mage or something. But anyways, yeah, I, I would try to shoot him and sometimes I'd roll a misfire and I'd have to have my shots. So I'd roll up 12 shots and I only get six. And then I would wound like four and then he'd either armor save him or ward save. And I, I was only killing like one or two guys on Hell Blaster turns per turn against a unit of like, he had like 23 or white lions in there. But anyways, what was huge and I knew it was coming, if he makes it or not, I don't care, but he does. Can you bring the spearman in? So he brings a spearman in and he crashes into these guys and I'm thinking, I got this. I so got this. I don't have this. So he comes in on his turn two, comes in with a spearman. Now he doesn't get the spear bonus, but he has the front rank, he has the second rank, then he has the high elf I can fight in an extra rank thing, but he doesn't get the spear rank because he charged in. So he's coming in at 20 attacks. His BSB makes it like 23 attacks or something like that. He winds up doing nine wounds out of 20. Because he's always strike first, reroll misses. So he's hitting almost all of them. But I'm tough three, he's strength three, he's hitting on fours. I guess that's kind of average. And I didn't think about it. But my Luminarch is here and not my Huracanum. So I'm working on hatred only. How this works out is he's actually over, over by one. And so I'm getting 21 attacks back on him. I'm hitting on fours, re-roll. So I should hit 10, half of those should hit again. So I should hit about 15 times. And then two thirds of those should wound. So I'm thinking two thirds of those, 15 times, I should kill about 10 guys. If I can kill 10 guys, I'll, he won't be steadfast. And I, will, I may lose combat, but I'll be steadfast. And I do six wounds, six stupid wounds. And I run away from him and I, I get away. I get, no, no, I didn't. I lost it all. So he moves. <laughs> Did this battle happen over? Yeah, he uh, he crashed into those guys, and he ran them down, and his, his unit was here. And in the meantime, I had done this with my demigriffs. I had moved over here. I only had two left at this point, so I kind of did this. So I was anticipating a charge into the flank of these guys, kind of like that. And when he broke these guys and ran them down, he was here. And after, uh, yeah, he caught him here. So then on my next turn, um, my demigriffs go crashing into the rear of these guys. And by this time, there's only like 10 of those guys left. So I go crashing into the rear of those guys. No, there's like 15 left. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna eat these guys alive. And then he casts a spell on me, making me toughness too. So I'll show you what that looks like. So on my turn then, he actually puts the frosty out here far enough for me able to see it. And so my Luminar comes over here, and then my Mage runs over here, and it kind of looks like that. And so what happens is, the dummies go in here, and I and now I got, in his magic phase, he was able to cast a minus two to my toughness. So I'm toughness two with a one-up armor save. So I come in here, and I kill like six guys. He comes back, puts two wounds on the dummy, so I still have a full dummy left. This is all on his turn, because I, I charged, yeah, I charged and I killed like six guys. Yeah, so it's normal for me on the first turn. So I kill like six more guys. I take the Luminarch, I shoot the Frosty, I kill the Frosty. Thank you, Bryce. And for whatever reason, his his level, his Mage Lord, he, oh, he used Lore Shadow and swapped places with the Mage Lord. So he was hiding behind the building and the level one came up to be in the White Lions. And I ran my mage over here because I thought I could fireball the Frosty, but the Luminarch did it for me. So instead, I fireballed the mage and killed the mage, too. Huge. 
Capticus charges up the hill, kills the bolt thrower. I kill the bolt thrower. So and then I overrun to a fleeing into a unit that's already fleeing. Still fleeing? So no, so they die. Because they were already fleeing. So the okay. bolt thrower is dead. They're and dead. These guys are dead. Mm-hmm. And then because I caught them now and then I reform to turn towards the face of the archers. Like a boss. So that all happens. Then on his turn, um, he casts he tries to charge here again. I don't even remember what turn it is. But right now his level two is dead. His level one is in with the white lions here. Um, I killed the bolt thrower. Did that. I'm over here. He cast my asthma on these guys, reducing my toughness. That's when it happens. I'm down to toughness too. In his turn, he did he did wind up reforming. I'm not gonna turn these guys around, but he does reform. I lost another demigriff. And now I'm just grinding away and I forget on my magic phase that it remains in play and I could have I could have dispelled that reduced my toughness on my turn. I completely forgot. And uh so yeah, so I'm toughness turn two again on my turn. And that was stupid, 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 because I hadn't, oh, I wasn't doing anything in my magic phase anyways, so that sucked. These guys were still trying to charge the Hellblaster, still failing, still failing, still failing. It's not turn four yet. So then eventually, uh, let's see, I get this unit down to, like, four guys plus his BSB, so he's got one rank, he's steadfast. The Luminarch turns like this. So... Ultimately, he does wind up getting uh, this unit into the Hellblaster. These guys, my knights on this side, by this time, are all the way up here. Saying hello to the bolt thrower that's up there. They get Go ahead and get real close to it. So they're kind of like that. Not, not in that formation, but they're like that. So on his turn, he turns, he swift reforms those archers. You don't have to move them, but those crossbowmen there. He swift reforms to turn to face my peg, and he he passes his swift reform, so he gets to shoot, but he does no wounds to my peg hero. And now I'm thinking this is awesome because I can charge those guys, get rid of them. But he does take this bolt thrower, and he does a shot at my peg guy. My peg's got one. He does two wounds to him, so I got my one wound left with my peg hero. He can't stand and shoot against me because. I'm closer than 10 inches, so I'm thinking, this is going to be awesome. I'm, I'm totally going to rip, just wreck those guys. Oh, that level 1 is up here. The level 1 is in the White Lions here. And here's something else. The White Lions have Banner of the World Dragon. He miscast twice. Got He miscast twice and got the 4 or less Calamitous Detonation with a big 5-inch uh, template. And it, which covered almost all the models, but he's got Banner of the World Dragon. So I'm thinking the White Lions are going to get rocked, but he's got Banner of the World Dragon. So that big pie plate, he winds up losing no guys two turns in a row when this level one, uh, when this guy miscasts. Uh, in two separate turns, he miscasts. But on the second time he miscasts, he does roll the one, two, or three, so he gets sucked into the warp. But two Calamitous Detonation, strength 10 hits with that Banner of the World Dragon, do no wounds to the White Lions. That unit should be either dead or fled or whatever. So on the final turn of, the, of that really matters of the game, I think I had bottom of six, it kind of looked like the knights go up and they eat the bolt thrower. What I didn't know at the time, but was the whole battle, and I... <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. I charge in to the crossbowmen there, which are really just archers. Again, he can't stand and shoot, so, because I'm closer than 10 inches. And then over here, like I say, he's got his BSB and four guys left, and I take the Luminarch, and I charge into the side like this, and I wind up wiping out this unit, which is great, because I'm thinking, wow, we gotta be really close on points, but I know, I know he's got a lot of points in this unit here, because he's got Banner of the World Dragon, he's got all these points in there, and I don't have much left because what happens here is I charge in, he has always strike first, and I think I might have geeked this. I let him re-roll his misses, and I think we have the same initiative. Uh, he re-rolls re -rolls his misses, he gets a wound through, I fail my one-up armor save one time, one dice gets through, and I fail my one-up armor save, and my general dies. That is the game right there because 
he he won this game but in our tournament here you have to win by more than 100 points and he won by he had he won this game by three points he he oh, it was a draw it was a draw he won but it was a draw but it was a draw by three points all he had left was that archer unit and these guys here and the point swing right there was my captain not making a one-up armor save against eight attacks and him even if even if he would have held even if he wouldn't have died i still would have won this game i would have won this game if my general didn't die i didn't need to kill those archers but I charged in anyways because I thought the bolt thrower was just going to kill me. But in hindsight, I just wasn't aware of the points because that thing would have been dead. I could have just flew over and not have to deal with those guys. But I thought I was so far behind on points. And that was the mistake of the game. My general failing a one-up armor save against archers because all he had left was this. My hellblaster was dead. My hurricanum was dead. Um, I wound up picking up 14 points, 10 for the draw. I had a banner there and a banner there yeah these guys the here no the spearmen eventually moved up into that quadrant and then those knights moved into that quadrant so that gave me uh two battle points for that quadrant and two battle points for that quadrant so i got 10 for the draw and four in quadrant battle points so i had a 14 so this game was lost by three points to give me the win as it was it was a draw and if I would have got the win on this, that would have gave me five more tournament points because a draw is worth 10 tournament and a, a win was worth 15. My friend, Steve, who wound up winning the, winning the whole tournament, he had 57 tournament points. I had 54 tournament points. If I would have not charged that unit, I would have got the win. I would have got 15 for this game instead of just the 10. And that 15 points, that extra 5, would have gave me the win. I would have had, uh, well, 5 more. I would have had 59. 59 to 57, I would have won the tournament. But anyways, I came in second. Steve had 57, and I had 54. Oh, what a game. What <laughs> stupid mistake. you got to make sure you keep your... And I would like to thank my son for helping me. He wants to go outside and shoot baskets, so we're going to clean this up. And thank you so much, Bryce. I appreciate your time. I love you lots. And... Uh, Watch, like, subscribe. What else? Comment. Rate. <laughs> Rate. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. Bye.